Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my first round of 16 prediction video. So we're going to look at the uh, left hand side of the draw here. Striker or D versus Ungern, Silse versus the Sage, RTSD versus Eel and Guinness versus Falladius. Let's look at the teams. So Striker has uh, added a guard to his a long beard, fine choice. He's a little light on guard, actually. He's still only got three guard. Um, I would have liked more than that, but of course he's gone for block on the death roller and a mighty blow troll slayer as well. And, you know, this this team can do some damage, can't it? It's got some strength, it's got some guard, got some mighty blow. He's lacking the reserve. I mean, well, okay, it's got 12 players, but one's the death roller who's only going to play one half. So it's, it's kind of lacking a reserve and lacking an apo, but... Um, yeah, you know, it can certainly... It's it's not a bad team. The Death Roller really isn't a bad choice in this format, I don't think. It's it's a bit more high risk, high reward, but it's not outright terrible like it usually is. <laughs> and he's playing Ungern, who has unsurprisingly added guard to his uh, Blitzer there. So he's got five guard total. And that this is this is a good team, isn't it? You know, he's, he's out guarding the Dwarves. He's not outstrengthening them because of the death roller, but he will be outstrengthening them kind of for a half, um, as well as out guarding them. And he's got thirteen players, three rerolls and an apo, thanks to the thanks to the leader rogue, which I really don't hate. It just um, you know, it, the extra player is good. Um, there's an argument for it. I don't think it's I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's outright bad leader on the big guy. It's something I didn't really think about. Um, but it does let him get more players, so you know if the game goes to overtime, he is likely have players left. Um, they've both got mighty blow, but of course, you've still got to imagine the dwarves are favourite to outbash the humans a bit. But uh, even then, they've, they're all guarded. Um, I'd love Striker to win this one, but you know, and it's nothing against Ungern. It's just Striker's the story of the World Cup, isn't he? But I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to predict Ungern just because, you know, humans, humans are so good. Basically, got more guard, more loads, more speed, and uh, they've got a couple of mighty blows as well, so they can they can fight a bit, and they've got loads of plays if it goes to overtime. So, yep, yeah, let's back Ungern to win this one. And next up is Silse versus the Sage. Silse is taking guard on a mummy, absolutely essential, seeing as they're they're going to be having a big scrap in the middle, and um, with the, with the mummies, you know, fighting all the time. So good that he's got a block mummy couple of guard he is he's a little bit guard light he has a tackle to hit the ghouls and he's got a block on two of his ghouls he's got the standard four ghouls um i actually prefer three ghouls in this foot i think uh, the more that i think about it the more i think three ghouls was the right play um so this is interesting because both are somewhat not as i would have them uh Silse going one extra ghoul and sage going one less ghoul um but you know it's it's definitely a good team and Silse is a fine coach and Sage has taken Mighty Blow on his white, so you know, this is reinforcing his idea of Mighty Blow Tacklers taking down whites. I think this is not a mistake, but I think maybe he may have been better with taking guard on the white, purely by the fact that the next match is going to be versus humans or uh, dwarves. If it's against dwarves, he probably just wanted another guard. So I think maybe he's keeping his options over for later may have been an idea. Uh, but, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? You don't want to keep your options open for later and then lose the one that you've got. Um, so, you know, take one match, taking one match at a time, you know, is, is fair enough. Um, you know, Mighty Blow did nothing for me in my in my last game. So it, it's a bit it's a bit dodgy, isn't it? Because it might just do nothing or it might be dominating. Um, so I, I don't think it's that good a skill choice. I, I would rather just get my, all my guard before I got Mighty Blow, basically. That, that's what I'm trying to say, because guard is always good. Um, I kind of do regret taking Mighty Blow. I probably should have gone guard. But, yeah, that's that's it's it's not bad, you know. It is, it is, it's bad for an undead team, I think, because I think it's just crazy that he hasn't gone three ghouls. But um, I do think three ghouls is probably better than four, so... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a tough one. I think probably I'm going to back Sage just on, on coaching, basically. Um, so, yeah, I'll back the Sage for this one. And the third match in this half of the draw is RTSD versus Eel, a necromantic mirror. Um, obviously, RTSD has the Clawpon werewolf there. 
He's gone for guard this time on the white, which uh, I can certainly get behind more guard. And yeah, you know, this is the problem with Necro. You've got to give up something. He's given up the white. He's got three rerolls, got a couple of ghouls. I do quite like his team, you know. Obviously, the he could have gone two block mighty blow werewolves. Um, but he's gone for the higher risk Clawpon wolf, you know. It's, you know, it's, you can't say it was bad or not. It's just bad or good, really. It's just if it works, it's amazing. If it doesn't work so well, he might be kicking himself. But that's it, isn't it? You know, I think, as I've said right from the very start, this is mostly going to be, you know, everyone's good. It's mostly going to be decided by who's luckier. And Clawpon gives you an automatic eye win button sometimes. So, yeah, fair enough. And now Eel's team is interesting because he, he's only used one double. Um, he started this second werewolf without any skills and started the flesh going with blocks. And what, now, what I think would have been better would have been to have started the werewolf with block and then taken Mighty Blow on him and then taken block on the flesh golem. But, you know, that's, I'm not saying he's done anything wrong. That's his decision, isn't it? 13 players. He's given up the second ghoul and still only has two rerolls. So... I think, but he has got two guard. I'm not sure he gets much from the tackle this game, really, or the next game. I'm not sure about that. Maybe he's already gone block and a fleshy or guard and a fleshy this round, actually. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's got block, tackle and frenzy to take down the, the two ghouls. You know, one of them has got a show hands, so they're defenseless ghouls um, for RTSD. But, yeah, you know, it's just a question of where the claw pump fires. And, you know, it's just because it's fun. Just for the like, I know, I know, at higher TV, it messes up the game and makes it a crapshoot if you like. But um, I like, I like, I like the funness of claw palm, so I'm going to back RTSD to win that. And the last game on this half of the draw is the third mirror. We've got a lizard man mirror between Guinness and Faladius. Guinness has gone for block guard. You know, his his, his second skill is guard on the Crocs. go now. I don't really like this because it's kind of putting all of your eggs in one basket. Now, you know, someone someone that I knew said, if you're going to put all your eggs in one basket, make it a strong basket. And I guess that's kind of what he's doing. You know, he's really... The, the game is going to be decided by how reliable his Crocs is. You know, he's going to be, have to be blocking with him because he's got block. So he's going to have to be activating him. I would have rather had a passive Crocs with only guard or an active Crocs with only block. So you'd lose less if he boneheaded. Um, so I'm not sure about this, to be honest, the the, the block guard crocs. Um, but, you know, it, he's certainly harder to deal with because he's strength five. So, there's you know, it does make sense to have guard on your strongest players. But there is certainly the bonehead becomes way worse when you're losing a double and a normal. Um, so, yeah, bit 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 high risk, high reward there from Guinness. Now, Faladius had started one of his Saurus with guard, so now he has block on him, which makes absolute sense. So his is the more reliable route of a block Crocs and, and then guard on the Saurus. Um, however, he doesn't have the Apo, does he? Uh, I think I vastly prefer an Apo to a, to a 12 Skink. And Guinness is the defending champion, and he's got high risk, high reward. If, if he gets rewarded for it, then that's good, isn't it? So, um, you know, it's 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 not wrong to go high risk, high reward. You've pretty much got to get lucky to win anyway. So, let's back Guinness, the defending champ. So the stars are for my picks there. Again, just a bit of fun, you know, I, it, and and a chance to show the teams off. Really, um, you know, anything can happen. And any any one of these guys, even whoever you know, anyone thinks is the favourite, only has a slightly higher than one in sixteen chance of winning the whole thing. So, uh, yeah, anything can happen. Stay tuned for replays of all the games. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.